megahertz. So between six and 700 megahertz, a bunch of that spectrum was sold off to telecom providers, uh, mainly T-Mobile, which is now part of Sprint. So, um, so the spectrum has changed and it's made it a little more difficult for wireless microphone users. Uh, we call that, uh, that spectrum change a repack. In other words, all those broadcast television stations that occupy that UHF television spectrum above uh, 600 megahertz, uh, actually more specifically above 608 megahertz, had to move down below 608. And this is what Albuquerque looks like now. Uh, we have channel 7 and channel 13 are in the VHF television range, and the rest of the uh, active TV channels are in the UHF spectrum. So there is open space. There is, uh, we haven't lost everything, but, the, but we have to be careful on how we plan uh, our frequency use for wireless microphones, especially if we're on a production, either film or television production, where that is mission critical audio, and we want to make sure that that audio is consistently recorded without any problems. Uh, so as I sort of highlighted earlier, frequencies used by wireless mics are going to be in broadcast television typically. The VHF range, 174 to 216 megahertz. And the UHF spectrum, 470 to 608, is typical. Now, other equipment has been made. Uh, my company used to build equipment. We don't build it anymore, but there was equipment used in the 902, the 928 megahertz spectrum. This was called the ISM band, or the Industrial Scientific and Medical Band, which was an unlicensed band, or what we call a Part 15, type acceptance. And you didn't have to have a license to use equipment up there. But that kind of has become the wild west of radio devices, and there were just a lot of problems trying to use equipment there. Uh, another part of the spectrum which recently opened up, there were some changes made by the FCC a couple years ago to allow uh, wireless microphones to be used in the 940 to 960 megahertz spectrum, which again is in the UHF spectrum. And we call that the studio to transmit or link uh, part of that spectrum, where basically uh, TV studios use a radio link to their transmitters. Here in Albuquerque, their transmitters are all up on Sandia Crest. So that's a radio link from the studio here in Albuquerque. But anyway, we're allowed to use equipment in that range. You have about 18 megahertz of spectrum to tune across. And so we can fit wireless microphone equipment in there as well. Um, So that's uh, uh, an overview of where wireless microphone equipment is used, the FCC spectrum. And by the way, that slide where I had all the, you know, the, the, you can find, that's a Wikipedia slide that I got off of uh, uh, off the internet. And you know, if you want to look at that further, you know, it has everything in there. But uh, um, wireless microphones typically have been used without licenses for many years, and we are actually pushing people now who are working in the film and television production industries to get a license. It's called a Part 74 FCC license. We want, it, it basically it puts you on the FCC radar. We had a previous commissioner of the FCC, this is going back a few years, who didn't regard wireless microphone equipment as important. And what he didn't realize is so much entertainment and so much content is produced using wireless microphones. So we need to have this industry on the radar. I, I'm sorry if I sound a little preachy, but it's important that everybody who owns wireless microphones, whether you have a couple or you've got 30, um, get a license for those. And we can then turn, as an industry, we can turn around and show the FCC, yeah, we're using the spectrum because the FCC is kind of got a use it or lose it mentality. Uh, if you aren't using the spectrum, well, we're going to take it away from you. So um, if you need help with that, uh, there are consultants like uh, Bill Ruck, who's based in San Francisco, California, or Henry Cohen, mm -hmm. who was uh, based in New York, mm -hmm. works for a company called CP Communications. They can help. They also have frequency coordination for very large events, but they also can help you. You pay them a fee and they will help you license all of your equipment. Wireless mics, IFB, uh, intercom, you know, anything that's a radio device that needs, to, needs a license, they'll help you with that. So 
I forget what the fee is. I think it's, uh, it, it might be $500 or something like that. But if you have a large amount of equipment, it can be a real chore to register all your stuff and get a license for it. And there are consultants out there that will do that for you. Uh, so David Brownlow will talk in great detail more about wireless microphones and how they're used, but I just kind of want to give you an overview of how wireless microphones are being used. I th a lot of times it's not visible uh, or, or people just don't realize that wireless microphones are being used. I once was, I was on a set, in fact it was Empire in Chicago. I talked to the production sound mixer up there who was doing all the audio for that uh, program when it was on television. He had 58 wireless microphones. Plant mics, which you know, gather ambient sound on the set. Uh, talent mics. There's just a huge amount of wireless that he was managing on set. And I was just amazed he had 58 channels of wireless microphones, but you know, that's what he was doing. Um, so as you can see, you know, we've got, uh, this is Scott Carter with, the, with NFL Films. NFL Films manages all the audio for NFL broadcasts. And so they mic the players. They actually mic the quarterback, the, uh, uh, the center. Some of the players also are wearing microphones and they actually wear special padding with a compartment to put the transmitters in. Uh, your local television stations typically are using wireless microphones on their cameras for their reporters out in the field. That's a drop-in uh, receiver uh, that will drop into the camera and give you two channels of, of wireless microphones. Uh, On-air presenters, uh, you know, people singing at national, you know, national anthem at, at sports events are all using wireless microphones. Uh, this is an IFB system here, which is another radio device for uh, monitoring uh, fullback audio or broadcast audio on air. Um, examples here, here's a wireless boom. This is uh, you know, Tom Cruise in one of the uh, Mission Impossible uh, films. This was shot in Europe and uh, British sound, production sound mixer did all the audio. I forget his name, uh, unfortunately, but uh, has won many accolades for his work. Uh, you can see the uh, transmitter here that he's got plugged into, you know, basically a microphone inside a, a Zeppelin with a, with a softy outside to uh, prevent any kind of uh, wind noise or anything like that. So, uh, cart system. This is Joe Foglia. He does a lot of production sound and he's got, you know, multiple channels of wireless with mixers and recorders on a cart that he can just roll on set and roll off the set and go somewhere else if he needs to. Um, Bag system, and this is Callahan Moots, who did, uh, he worked for NBC, doing a lot of audio for the Olympics in Japan here recently, the Winter Olympics. He's got a bag system. He's got a boom pole, but he's also carrying uh, receivers, uh, mixer, recorder. Probably there may be even a camera hop where we got a transmitter or two sending audio back to somewhere else. So he's recording all the audio, mixing it, but he's also sending audio out somewhere else with his bag system. So there's different ways to use equipment in uh, film and television production. So the things that uh, can occur, one of the problems that we run into with wireless microphones is of course interference. And then that's why frequency coordination is so important. Uh, intermodulation is a phenomena where we have RF mixing from different transmitters, in this case it'd be wireless microphone transmitters, and creating false frequencies uh, that then can cause interference with the equipment that you're using. So in a, in a way the, the equipment starts to generate interference and interfering with itself. So it's important that we do frequency coordination and there is software that will do that for you. Uh, my company publishes Wireless Designer, which is free, you can download, from, download that from our website. A wireless Workbench, which is published by Shure, is also free. If you want to get something that you can carry around and check local RF conditions, uh, Freak Finder is an app that you can use on your phone, which will generate, uh, it'll check for intermod and it will also pick frequencies if you're traveling to other cities. And this is important because it, remember, we have to work around active television allocation. So, using something like FreakMinder can help you. It's a nice little handy little app that will pick frequencies for you 
when you're traveling from city to city. And this is often very common with people who are doing like freelance videography or production sound mixers who are traveling, let's say between California, Arizona, New Mexico, or Georgia, or wherever they're going, you know, to do work. So uh, the IAS software is published by a company called Professional Wireless. They do frequency coordination for very large events like NFL football games, the Super Bowl, you know, uh, uh, basketball games, foot, uh, hockey games. All this stuff is, and because you're working in different cities, it's important that you have software that can pull in the local broadcast information. You use a, it, on the IES software itself, you type in a zip code, and it will pull in the, the active broadcast allocations, and then it will allow you to do frequency coordination around those. You have to buy a license. It's a little bit pricey, a couple hundred dollars, but uh, my company owns 20 licenses and we use them all the time when people call up and say, you know, I'm traveling from, you know, I'm going to Kansas City and I'm doing some work there and I, I need, you know, here, here's my equipment, here's what I'm using, can you give me a list of usable frequencies? And we do that all the time for our customers. But if you want to buy your own uh, license to do that, you can certainly buy it. So IAS is uh, very handy to have. So this is a little more of a scholarly <laughs> explanation of what intermodulation is. But basically, um, you know, if, if you just remember that when RF mixes, you can get the sum and the difference of those frequencies, and they'll generate false frequencies at a fairly high level locally there with your equipment and cause interference. Um, you can certainly, there's all kinds of information on intermodulation online, but this is the more scholarly, you know, we've got 650 and 670 megahertz transmitters operating here. There's a 20 megahertz difference. So now our device is generating and wireless microphones and it, it can act as a non-linear device. Lin linearity refers to preserving the, what's going into the transmitter and what's coming out of it. But unfortunately, not everything is perfectly linear, so that you're going to get some intermodulation, and and we want to you know coordinate to prevent that. So we could talk a lot about that, but just just remember that intermod causes interference, and will make your equipment unusable at times. So frequency coordination software. This is a screenshot for wireless designer. And it, it will, if you're using our receivers, certain model receivers, you can plug those into your computer. You can run the software, it will scan, and then give you, uh, you know, it'll tell you what frequencies are usable. Now, when you see these red flags, it means there's a problem, and then you, ha you just simply use the uh, uh, frequency coordinator on here, and it will coordinate frequencies. If you're using non-electrosonics equipment, you know, competitor's products, it could be anybody's wireless microphones, you can type those frequencies in manually, and then it will tell you, you know, it'll, it'll allow you to coordinate. It'll tell you whether those frequencies are usable or not, and then if you have to change them, it'll help you with that. So you can use this, the wireless, design, the wireless designer is free. It runs e either on PC or Mac environments, and you can use that to coordinate, uh, you know, any wireless device out there. This is a, a spectrum shot of, so in, in Wireless Designer, it'll scan and give you a, a local picture of the RF. So down here, this is fairly high powered RF, and these are gaps where we can put wireless microphone frequencies. So just to give you an idea. And by the way, you can buy handheld uh, RF scanners. There's RF Explorer, for instance. You can buy that on Amazon. It's only a few hundred dollars. It will scan a, a huge amount of radio spectrum and you know, allow you to do a site survey without having to run the software or anything like that. So you can buy handheld scanners as well to do this for you. Uh, this is a report for IES software. So when we generate a report, we can email it to the uh, customer. In this case, uh, this guy's, uh, this is a production sound mixer, Danny Jeffrey. He was doing work in St. Croix, Indiana. I typed in his zip code, pulled in all the local broadcast info. He had, tell, he had told me earlier what he was using uh, equipment-wise, and then we simply generated a report to give him usable frequencies in that area. 
So we we can help with that too if you're uh, you know if you if you've got to go to a, a different city. So at this point, uh, that's the end of my presentation. And uh, if there are any questions, we can certainly talk about that. You know, any questions about our spectrum, how wireless microphones are used, or anything like that? I have some on the Presidio just to better you can. So first one, first question I have is for, you said with NFL films, how you do uh, broadcast for audio. Is it possible for someone to get in there with a job for that, or would you have to have your own equipment to get that job or whatnot? Well, the equipment is all owned by NFL Films, so okay. it's their people that are doing it. Yeah, so, if, I mean, if you wanted to go to work for NFL Films, you could certainly do that, and, and there are people who do that uh, for the games. It's pretty interesting. They manage all of that, you know, and all that video and audio is archived in New Jersey, and that's how they produce all the highlights that you watch mm -hmm. on local television in the evening. That's a subscription service that NFL Films does. So, but they manage all the audio, and uh, you know they will then provide you know f uh, uh, video clips you know to stations that subscribe you know for their sports programming. Thank you. I have two other questions. I'll let's go back and forth. Sorry. Well, I guess nine kind of. Piggybacks on that. Um, uh, you know, specifically mentioning the the NFL Films and the mic'd up. I, I know that they've gotten into trouble over live broadcast of those recordings. Um, yes, they have. And, and the FCC kind of regulates all of this. Are, are there ever any issues with censorship or, uh, you know? Not censorship, but believe it or not, there have been scandals where, so now the NFL requires, you know, I, you know, I mentioned that the transmitters are on the quarterback in the center. Yeah. Well, those transmitters were on, and when they were in the huddle, anybody could listen to that audio. Well, guess right. what? Opposing coaches were monitoring the the play the plays that were being called in the huddle. Right. And also, they're on the when they're on the sidelines. Yes. It, it's it's always being recorded so now, and broadcast. So now the, require, the requirement is the audio has to be encrypted. So. Uh, you know, my company as well as other, other companies build encrypted wireless microphone systems so that they can't eavesdrop on the audio. Okay, <laughs> but I mean, if there was not an encrypted audio, could the FCC ever come in and censor no. what's actually being done no. since you're using... The only time the FCC gets involved is when there's profanity or something like that being aired. But okay. we live in a democracy, right? So that's the government is not, they don't care what you guys are talking about. Well, the only thing they care about is what's being broadcast. Profanity, you know, something profane getting aired accidentally going out over the air, you know, during a, a, a national broadcast, let's say. Okay. So if you're, you know, just recording something for a, a project, the content of that isn't m being monitored? No. Okay. So the NFL, though, has their own rules. So, you know, cheating is certainly not tolerated. And so people have been fined. You know, there have been <laughs> fines levied against opposing coaches who violated, you know, they were not supposed to be monitoring the audio, but they were and got caught. So they got fined. So they, they take care of it internally. Thank you. What is the name of the software wireless designer? Can you go back to that? Sure. Wireless Sorry. designer, yeah. Because so, I just looked it up. Uh, so wireless designer is uh, used with. Let me go back. With your assist with Electrosonics. Right. Let's see, maybe so I, I was just looking for it. I didn't see it in the App Store. Yeah. So the. Uh, here, I'll go back to it. You know what the minute. real name of it is? Yeah. So wireless designer, you can download it. It's free on our website. On your website. On our website, okay. Electrosonics.com. Right. Um, and that uh, now you can it, it, you can plug your computer into there are certain re model receivers that have you know Ethernet ports or USB ports where you can right. use the receiver as as it, it now becomes the uh, for scanning purposes it's now gathering all the RF energy locally and will uh, feed that information into the software. 
so that you can, you can actually get an R, a, a nice picture of the RF environment. Uh, wireless designer, uh, or excuse me, wireless workbench works the same way. And that's published by Shure, and that you can plug into certain Shure receivers and that will do the I've same seen thing. That, yeah. But if, even if your receiver, like this, this portable receiver here that I'm holding, uh, this doesn't have a port yet. I, I think we're gonna change that though. But if you don't have a port on there where you can plug into your computer, you can manually type in those frequencies and then coordinate you know, with the information that you have. So it is possible to do that. All right, my next question would be for how you're talking about news networks, the affiliate news networks for sound. Would you have to provide your own equipment or is that the same with the NFL where they provide it for you? Uh, if you're working for the news networks, you provide your own gear. So um, I've, I've got, you know, I've number of people I've talked to over the, over, like Callahan Moots, that picture, I, he works, he's done a lot of work for NBC, but he's, he's a uh, freelance guy. So um, he, he just contracts with NBC to, uh, to do audio work wherever they need him. So sometimes, he's, you know, he's gone to Japan to do the Olympics, but sometimes I remember I talked to him one time and he was in Mexico, you know, doing work down there. <laughs> So, uh, uh, or, or in Juarez, El Paso, that area. So, okay. I mean, they just, they travel wherever they're needed. But right. uh, there are a lot of freelance people doing that work type of work now. It used to be that networks had their own employees that would do that, you know, their own videographers and their own sound people. Not anymore, they contract that all out. Okay. So it's all outsourced to uh, independent contractors. Right. Thank you, and one last question. I'm not sure you answered it too as well, but for the wireless boom poles or boom mics that you're showing, do you think it's worth the money to invest if you have the money, but it sounds as good as with a wired one, or what was your input on that, I guess? Uh, you know, David could probably answer that question better mm -hmm. than I could. I mean, you can go wired or wireless with a boom pole. Uh, I guess it just depends on how much, you know, the, yeah. the wireless, of course, you're not tethered to anything. Just and we actually head. make, yeah. you know, we got, we got a plug-on transmitter here that will plug into the bottom of a, a boom pole. Yeah, I assume so, it's the same as like Bluetooth headphones. They're not as good quality as a wired, but it's how good of a technology it is. I guess I'm wondering. Right. You think? Yeah. So now you're you're free to go wherever you need to go, mm -hmm. and you're not you're not limited by uh, the length of that cable. So. Yeah. Uh, Thank you. Any other questions? John, could you talk a little bit about Electrosonics? How long they've been in New in Rio Rancho and. Uh, yeah. Sort of the evolution of the company, please. Right. So, Electrosonics. Uh, in fact, we just celebrated our 50th uh, 50th year in business, our 50th anniversary. We are a homegrown company. We were started in 1971 by two engineers who used to work for Singer, the not the sewing machine company, but the flight simulator company. And they decided to, to get in. They start. Our, they wanted to start their own business. So they thought, let's get into the audio business. So they started making uh, simple portable PA equipment. That's how we got started. And then in the mid 70s, 1975, we, we made our first, we built our first wireless microphone equipment. And then it just kind of went on from there. We realized that the wireless microphone business was a growing business. You know, it used to be a church might have, for instance, one channel of wireless, or a film production might have one or two channels. But now it's gone from that to 30, 40, and I think I mentioned earlier, I, I talked to a sound mixer who had 58 channels of wireless you know, on a set that he was managing. So wireless microphones, we realized in the 80s, in the 1980s, that that was a very, you know, that was a growing business. That was a big market that was expanding. And so we just have over the years invested heavily into that, you know, into that part of our business wireless mics, as well as IFB. IFB is the, uh, the, the earpiece. If you're watching a, a news broadcast, for instance, they'll, they'll hear the uh, broadcast audio through an earpiece. Well, they have a receiver that that earpiece is plugged into, and there's a transmitter sending that audio to the receiver. So we build wireless mics, IFB, stereo in-air monitors, you know, which are used for concert tours and things like that. So all that is wireless, but it's all part of our wireless business. So something we just uh i just heard in the news yesterday that they're deregulating the hearing aid industry so that uh 
you do not have to have, you could sell a hearing aid, which is basically um, amplification, sometimes wireless technology, but you, you're able to do that without a prescription these days, which should make the market more competitive, I would imagine. Yeah, I imagine you probably just do everything online, the hearing test online, order hearing aids online, and not have to go see an audiologist, <laughs> per se, you know, right? So it's, yeah, so things have changed quite a bit. And with wireless microphones, things have changed. Um, you know, I talked about licensing your equipment, but actually now the FCC relaxed the rules a little bit, and I don't want to cause confusion here, but if you're operating a, a wireless microphone transmitter 50 milliwatts or less, you don't actually technically, technically need a license anymore. So a lot of churches who have been using wireless microphone equipment, let's say churches and schools, were using wireless microphone equipment you know, illegally for years. Um, they, so you don't have to have a license there, but if you're working in television and, and film production work, generally you're gonna be working with higher power transfers, 100 milliwatts, maybe even a quarter watt in some cases. And just to get everybody, to get the FCC to notice the industry, we, we, we really strongly encourage people to license their equipment for that reason. Because we want to preserve the, the uh, allocations that we have. We don't want to lose any more. Because if we do lose more, it's going to make it even harder to create content. And that's, you know, that's what we're all in this business for, really. Are there any other questions for John, do you have uh, anything to sum up? Um, Can you talk to us about the equipment that you brought? Yes. Uh, so I did bring a few, you know, a few things with me. Um, we make a variety of equipment. You know, this is your, these are some of your typical uh, lavalier belt pack transmitters that are used, you know, to to mic either talent, uh, for instance, uh, in a film, uh, a film or or television uh, production. So, you know, these are, these are lavalier belt packs. Uh, one of these has the ability to jam sync time codes so it can be, uh, you know, make it easier in post-production to sync the video and audio together. Uh, another model here has the ability to record on an SD micro card so you can record the audio. You can use it as a recorder or a wireless microphone transmitter, but not both. Um, here's a typical portable receiver. In fact, I've got two. This uh, may look familiar in that picture with the camera in the uh, wireless microphone applications. Uh, this was dropped into a camera. So this is a typical ENG receiver, but this can also be put in a bag for film work as well. Uh, this is our latest and greatest portable receiver. This uh, will do two channels of wireless microphones, if you're using stereo, digital stereo transmitters, you can send four channels of audio to this receiver, and it will actually record four channels on an SD micro card, uh, which is the card slots right here. So you can record up to four channels of audio, and it will give you analog or AES audio out, outputs. You know, so if you want to stay all digital in the chain, no A to D or D to A conversion, uh, then we can, we can, this is a digital modulation uh, scheme on the, with the transmitter and the receiver, and then we're digital coming out of the outputs here and going into your mixer recorder. So uh, this is a new product that's been shipping uh, for almost a year, not quite a year, but uh, so we have equipment like that. I have a larger receiver here that can also be used on a cart, and this will give you either analog or digital outputs, this is Dante. So this is, this is another audio, this is audio over IP here. So this will send four channels of audio via Dante to a mixer. So we have equipment like this as well. And this is a modular receiver system here. A little bit older product, but you know, you can operate as a two channel system or up to six channels. You know, just, you just plug in the receiver modules and. Uh, RF is distributed internally from your two antennas. You can also cascade RF, you know, from one mainframe to another if you want to, uh, if you have more channels. So if you want to do six, 12, you know, 18 channels of wireless, you, you can easily uh, just have two antennas and, and feed the RF from one mainframe to the next. So 
Uh, plug-on transmitter here. This could be used for plugging a stick mic in to do interviews. Very popular with television stations. So if you watch any local TV like KOAP or KRQE, they're using plug-on transmitters often with their interviews. And the, the uh, reporter is wearing a lavalier system, but they are interviewing with a stick mic. And that's what this is for. This can also be used for boom poles. You can plug this into a uh, wireless boom. This does have switchable phantom power up to 48 volts. So if, they, uh, if it's a condenser microphone, you can just simply power it off the plug-on itself. So, so that's kind of an overview of what we do. Sorry, what, what, what kind of range do those wireless transmitters uh, have? It, you know, if you're outdoors, line of sight, you know, we've done half a mile. If you're indoors, of course, buildings like this tend to attenuate, and we're not dealing with very high power to begin with. So the building acts like a, a Faraday cage. It's grounding a lot of that RF energy before it reaches the receiver. So your range may be much more limited in, indoors. But outdoors, you know, I've done some testing myself and you know, I've been able to do, you know, like 2,500 feet easily, you know, so. So RF uh, radio frequencies are line of sight for the most part. I mean, when we're looking at what kind of reception we're getting from the crest, if we yeah. can see the towers, then we're probably getting a pretty robust signal. Yes, that is correct. Uh, you know, VHF and UHF frequencies don't follow the curve of the earth much. You know, the HF spectrum, I'm an amateur radio operator, so a lot of us amateurs operate in the high frequency spectrum, and that will, they're much longer wavelengths and they'll follow the curve of the earth, right? But VHF and UHF do not do that. So you are limited much more line to, you know, line of sight. I talked to the broadcast engineer here at KOAT, and they're, they're VHF, their transmitter is on the top of Sandia Crest, five kilowatt power, 5,000 watt, they can reach three states, because of the height of the transmitter, and, but you know the fairly long wa the the uh, the wavelengths of VHF allow them to cover a fairly far distance. So, okay. so again, <laughs> all right. So, so the location of the transmitter is very important, and uh, the location of the receiver is very important too. So, uh, the typical battery that you have. So uh, I've had situations where the cast may be way out in, on horseback, mm -hmm. 100 yards away. At 100 milliwatts, you may not hear them. But you can bump this up to 250 milliwatts, and suddenly you get nice, clear signal, and you can hear them. Also, um, if you're doing car-to-car -car stuff, and a, a, a car is moving along, you know, not tethered to a tow vehicle, you can put this in the car and crank up the output, and it'll help you with the signal. Does that help? Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, go ahead. You're back. Come on back. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> also, uh, uh, well, one more thing uh, while you're up here. Um, a big thing about, uh, in my mind, uh, a, a big deal about electrosonics is they broadcast um, it's a it's a uh, analog broadcast, is that correct? It's not a digital broadcast. The so digital hybrid has an has an analog component to it. Right. right? So mm -hmm. so you're right. Well, the digital hybrid, the audio is digital, but it's encoded and goes out in analog RF. Okay. So then is that how you're able to operate on the same spectrum with with television? Because television is going to be digital. Well, we build the digital equipment also, so. It, it's it, you know we're just sharing the spectrum with with local you know, local broadcast television right 
but uh, you're always you're always you know uh, uh, the receivers have a scan function in them, which is something you should talk about. True. <laughs> yeah, that's right. We let me let me that. finish my little shtick first. So uh, um, the um, a big competitor to uh, Electrosonics, Zaxcom, is all digital broadcast. So the, the audio's encoded digitally and the signal's sent out digitally. Huge problem. Um, and because of that, <laughs> they design their transmitters to also be recorders. But the problem with that is that digital is very beamy and it's it, incredible line of sight. If I walk around the corner over there, I'll lose the signal. With electrosonics, I can walk around the corner, go down the hall, go outside, get my car, and drive away, and there's a pretty good chance I can still hear the pack. I've recorded helicopter, guys in helicopters, like coming into the set, and started picking them up in the air. And then the helicopter came down and landed, and the guy took off. I doubt if I could have ever done that with a digital-only broadcast. You know, um, if you have a TV set at home <coughs> and you have an antenna up, you know there's broadcast TV. You know that if there's a huge snowstorm going on, you know, it can cut the signal out. So does that help at yeah, all? Yeah, definitely. Okay. So he was anyway. talking about the uh, frequency scan function which is something I kind of skipped over because I was talking more about you know, just frequency coordination in general. But this receiver, for instance, and some of our other receivers, actually all of these receivers up here will do, and I don't know if that's going to show up on camera very well, but if I tell this to scan, it will, uh, you'll see a sliding cursor going across the screen. So, and then it will stop and it will tell you use this frequency, yes or no. And then if you say yes, I'm gonna select that frequency. That's a clear and open channel that you can use. Now you can do that, you know, with the, if you're doing a small amount of wireless microphone equipment, you can do that. But if you are getting into a much larger, you know, if you got multi, like 30 channels of wireless, then it would probably be a good idea to use software to do that. But this does have the ability to pick a frequency. And in this case, this is a two-channel receiver, so it will pick two frequencies for you that are clear and open in the area. And then all you have to do is sync your transmitter through an infrared port. You know, transmitter one, transmitter two will then sync those transmitters to match the receiver. That's in the digital domain. In the analog domain, you do it all manually. So uh, our little, this, this guy, for example, which I have one in my bag here. When I turn this on, there's a scan feature built into the screen. When we get to my part of the presentation, we'll come over and we'll do it. So I hit the button here, and you, this turns into like an oscilloscope kind of window, and you can see the cursor going across the screen. And if there's interference, it'll, there'll be a huge blip, and a clear spot will be clear. and then interference in a blip or something. So then you can stop it. <coughs> you can actually manually <laughs> scroll through it and, if you want to. Right, and you can, you'll stop it and you'll go to the clear spot and you'll see what frequency that is. So then you go to your transmitter and you hit the frequency button and you set the transmitter to that frequency and you should be good to go. Now, when I talk, I'm only going to talk about my little bag rig here with only a couple of um, microphones. But the next thing that I do is I go to um, the Frequency Finder app. And in the Frequency Finder app, I'll enter in, if I'm using, here I have six channels. Here, I'll show it to you. Sorry. <laughs> okay. Okay. So I've entered six channels. And is as, uh, so you, you can see they all say OK. So that means there's no uh, intermodulation. There's no between the radios, and I'm good to go. So you know, on a theatrical set where you have multiple characters, I use this a lot. You know? And <clears throat> generally, you know, once you're in a, an environment like Albuquerque and you find clear frequencies, you're, you're pretty much good to go. 
um, for the rest of the show. You know, there might be weirdness. There's a, it could, you know, up around Los Alamos. <laughs> uh, sure. uh, um, but anyway, so uh, that's how you set your frequencies. Am I doing okay? Yeah, I'll, I'll let you just go ahead and take over because I don't have really much more to add to what you're saying. So okay. if you want to, I'll just go ahead and, and bow out here. Well, if you need to pack up or something. No, that's about it. I'll just okay. wait right here. That's fine. Um, all right, am I gonna go? It's my turn to take over. Okay, anybody want to hear what I have to <laughs> Okay, um, I'll, I'll try. First thing, what's the first thing you do when you get to a place to record sound? Turn off your phones, please, okay? That's number one, okay? So you always got to have that in the back of your head, okay? Turn off your phone. So just to go back from the top, what I brought is just my, what I call a bag rig, which uh, John showed. Um, and uh, by the way, I've been using Electrosonics since the 1980s. I started with a 185 system. I think that's when everybody in Hollywood started using uh, Electrosonics. And you know, we're really lucky to have them right here. They take care of you like you're a prince. You know, they'll, you, you know, they'll fix anything. They'll help you in any way they can. 30 years, never a problem with Electrosonics. <laughs> How, how's that for a plug? <laughs> okay, so, um, so typically, um, uh, uh, on a one-man band situation, I'm not. I I really can't talk about like a multi, you know, a giant theatrical show. I have a different cart for that, a sound cart with a different rig, and I have a couple of these VR receivers and stuff. Um, I my uh, just to let you know, I'm kind of twilighting my career. I'm not taking on those big jobs anymore. Uh, so uh, I, I mainly do bag rig, one man band stuff. So this is what I take. So I have a recorder. I have um, I have my receiver and uh, um, and my uh, wireless mics. So we'll take this transmitter. Actually, we'll take this one. Um, no, well, not that one. This one. Well, maybe I'll use two. I don't know. So, um, just to go over what I have, I have a cart. I have these bags. This is my bag here. I don't know if you can see this. You got, if you guys want to get up and come over and look, that'd be cool. <clears throat> so, um, this is kind of scaled down. But in, the, in this bag is where I carry all my wireless stuff. And uh, you know, you have, there's a lot of stuff. Uh, and these boxes are all, uh, no one's in. These are all lavalier microphones. I carry, you know, I don't know how many I have in here. A couple of dozen lavs. I have a, um, uh, we call these butt plug transmitters uh, to do wireless boom. I have all this various different kinds of tape and uh, things for attaching the microphones to people. This ent entire bag is just full of stuff for um, putting microphones on people, which we're going to discuss. We'll go through this, okay? Uh, in this bag, uh, by the way, here is an uh, IFB transmitter. I have that too. Um, uh, and I, I, I just throw all the stuff that I need, like I put the, my mic in this bag and stuff. And so this is kind of, I, you, normally, uh, this always comes with me. Uh, normally if I'm doing a small show, I'll just pick out two transmitters and two mics and just keep them with me here. So I only really need to keep this bag in this bag. <coughs> and. Then I always carry around uh, a lot of the little pieces that I need 
for putting the microphones on people. Okay? Now, this, this never leave home without transport tape. Okay? Um, uh, this is like, uh, you know, you use this for everything. Here, pass it around. Medical tape, right? <laughs> yeah. Medical tape. Medical tape. Really comes in handy. Yeah. Very oh, sticky. Let's the sweat go through, you know. Yeah. Uh, uh, I'm, you know, yeah. Uh, always just have bunches of, I, you know, I have lots of it. I, I would never leave home without my <laughs> transport tape. So the fact that it's breathable means it's going to last longer. It, it, it helps. Skin. It helps. You know, what? Yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll, yeah we'll, we'll do that in a sec. Okay. Um, <laughs> all right, so. Cool. cool, very cool. All right, don't go away, don't go away. <laughs> so what's the, besides turning off your cell phone, that's very important, what's the second most important thing? No. Anybody? Come on. Just listen. No. Batteries. <laughs> batteries. Okay. Um, these things don't work without batteries. Um, and batteries are expensive. Uh, well, you don't have to buy them. So, um, um, uh, you know, you. Sh uh, even if you're going to be a one-man band, uh, you know you sh you should charge the company for batteries because uh, I'll show show you another part of this in a minute. We always use the lithium Energizer double A's. These are very very good batteries. They last a long time. Are they rechargeable? No, no. I don't use rechargies. Um, <coughs> uh, if I were in a studio situation and going to be there for six months on the same film. I might think about using rechargeable batteries. But if I'm doing a Western or something in, my, in the boonies all the time, working out of a truck or something not near power, it's just too big a pain in the ass. Okay. You know? So, Can I yeah. Can you do my own yeah, yeah. Okay. So we'll load up the battery. I sure hope this stuff works. <laughs> <laughs> Better. <laughs> so, um, you just gave us the sales <laughs> Now, you, uh, by the way, see, I just did it. Um, there is a, um, uh, here, I'll use one of his. Transmit. Do you mind? No. Um, uh, oh, good. So, the battery compartments on these things are a little tricky. Um, well, this is a new one. I haven't even seen this one. But when you turn these on, you have to hold the on button down, and it'll count off one, two, three, and it's on. Okay? If you let go of it before it gets to three, it goes into a standby mode. Standby. Right. Yeah, so okay. there's no RF, but it powers up the transmitter so you can make audio adjustments, but you're not transmitting. Mm. So that's the reason it's set up that way. And then you have to hold it down to turn it off. So, by the way, these are just little computers. Like everything we do, these are all just little computers. So what you've learned about how to troubleshoot your computer, kind of, you know, like rebooting, you know. <laughs> turn it off. Yeah, turn it, turn back, it back on. on. You know, a big deal. All right, so, is this mine? Yes. So I have a, uh, a tra so I come over to the recorder, turn the recorder on. If you want to come over and look at this. So uh, also, uh, I also have a ComTech here, and I'm going to turn on my batteries, and I'm going to turn on my uh, receiver here, Electrosonics. There we go. So let's see, what channel is this? So shall we do a scan? Anybody want to see a scan? Okay. Yeah. So let's go to menu. Uh, Set up, actually. Where is the scan? Next mode. Hold on. No, no, no. 
is the scan if I hold down the two arrows? Um, so yes, is it SRC? Yeah, SRB. Oh, an SRB. I think it's a B. Do you remember? I haven't scanned in a long time. Um, let me try that. See, I can't remember if there's a second button on those or not. That's an old one. Um, um, let me go to a, well, hold on here. Okay, if I hold two down, does it scan? Do you remember? Yeah, let's uh, go to the menu. menu. No, no, no. There it is. Okay. So go ahead. Select that. Okay. Then there we go. Now and we're now scanning. Come through. on over. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, John. Can you guys see that? Oh, that was, there's something yeah, bumped right so there. I'm on right here. And there's something that picked up with the first. There's a spike, right? Yeah. I understand. Okay. So it'll just continue. It'll sweep through. Okay. And allow you to look at the get a snapshot of the RF spectrum. Then you can stop it, and then we can zoom in. That's so, right, like a spike at the beginning and towards the right. right. So right now it's it's we can we can stop it, and then we can push the button again, and then we can we can actually scroll using the up down arrows. We can scroll up or down here, and look. There's a cursor there. And you can place that cursor, see that dotted mm -hmm. line thing that, sh that moves up or down. So I can put that, I can see, I can pick open spectrum just manually myself if I want to do that. And it will warn you too, if you're too close to like high powered RF, it'll, you'll get this check frequency. Let me see if I can do that again. It'll, it'll tell you check frequency if you're too close to uh, uh, a high powered RF source. Like our box <laughs> our yeah, see, it's saying check frequency. So it's warning me that I'm too close to this. Or see that that's off the chart. Or it's probably a local, probably a local TV station. Yes. Okay. So we're too close to that. So I'm going to move away from that a little bit, and then we'll select. And none of this would be on the would be scanning for anything in the the microwave. No, 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 no. Just that's right. just the okay. usable UHF band. So that would be the TV we're talking about. Right, right. Now uh, these are a little bit older. These are one generation back from what they sell now, and this is on what's called Block Twenty Two, which. Uh, the, the difference from uh, an older generation to the current more tuning spectrum okay. so the one the one I've got there which looks very similar it tunes a 75 megahertz block that tunes a 25 megahertz block oh, okay so now you've got three times also and also they are I'm, I'm sorry go well, on I was gonna say the other receiver that I was showing that covers the entire UHF TV spectrum. This, wow. this, 470 to 608 megahertz. This guy? Uh, that one does, yeah. And, and that, that's just handheld? Yeah. Uh, is it, handheld, you can Velcro it onto something and drop it in a bag. That's amazing. Yeah, yeah. How, so much is, how much does it cost? Yeah, so it's cost <laughs> yeah these are... Uh, over five grand. Yeah, it's over $5,000. Yeah. <laughs> so we saw how we scanned with that one, right? So this has an RF setup menu and then... And then we can scan here. It has a smart tune also, but we can scan as well with that, and it will sweep through just like that did. You said this new one called about around five grams. Did you ever take that, so the SRC, which is the the, the the one I've got with the that, that receiver there, uh, those are in the three thousand dollar range. Which is a little higher than that. Yeah, this would be a little okay. more expensive, but uh, but this will have the same. You know, all that functionality is being built into this equipment nowadays because, as I said earlier, we've lost spectrum. We've had to, you know, broadcasters have had to move down you know, in, in, into a smaller space. And so having the, the ability to scan like that 
especially when you're traveling, and, and I'm sure David's done a lot of traveling, you know, into different cities, you can you can get an RF snapshot basically of where you're working. Yeah. You know, you you mentioned earlier about uh, in 2010 when they sold off, uh, they auctioned off a lot of that. Where's it? Um, I know you you mentioned AT and T, T Mobile, uh, T Mobile, yeah. yeah. But also Dish Network bought some of that. Yeah. Up a ton yeah. Of and that. I don't know what they're doing with it. Because What's that? I'm not exactly sure what they're doing with it. I'm not, yeah. I think they wanted to get into the telecom business, but I don't think they've done anything with it. So it seems like they're, they've spent a lot of money and got no return on their investment, in my opinion. So, uh, so any, by the way, um, uh, a while ago, um, let's see, do I, where do I have that? So here, no, that's not it. Sorry. Well, we'll just go with this one. So I made these charts a while ago for myself. For this, yeah, of, you know, this is kind of old. And now. this is all local, right? Yeah. Well, um, 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 exactly. It like uh, uh, block 24, which is one of the blocks they sold off. There were these TV stations on there. Um, here's the, oh, the, these blocks are all gone. This is this cheat sheet's pretty much dead. I thought I brought a newer one. Hold on. Is is uh, it possibly what's in your pocket? No. I anyway, saw, I, I noticed it said block twenty nine. Uh, where? Right there in your pocket. Oh oh, well this is kind of interesting. Uh, this was an old um, chart that uh, Electrosonics used to put out. You don't put this out anymore, do you? No. Um, uh, but this is back in the days. These are all the blocks. Okay. And these are the TV channels that are on those blocks. How much so, of this changes? Well, it's changed a lot. And that's yeah. why this has become, some of this uh, has become obsolete. But what he's showing you are pre-coordinated frequencies. Mm. Now, it doesn't take into account the local television allocation, so you still have to be careful. But those are intermod free. Remember we talked about intermodulation? Mm -hmm. right. So what he's got, if as long as those are clear frequencies, and you can check that scanning with your receiver, or like I said, you can use an RF Explorer and do a site survey with that. Um, but that will then okay. just give you automatically coordinated frequencies, and you just, just stay away from frequencies, as you know, are occupied by broadcasters. Mm. In the real world, though, generally, you know, you have enough spectrum if you're running six or eight mics, you know, you just keep them far enough apart. You know, um, if, if, you know, you can hear the problem. If you hear a problem, you'll go to your frequency finder and enter in the thing. And if it's, you know, one of the frequencies you picked is something's wrong with it, then just change it. So that's all, you know. Again, <laughs> you know, in the real world, when you get planted somewhere, you work all these problems out and they're kind of pretty much gone for, for the rest of the time that you're in that spot. Okay? Yeah. I was gonna ask, you said that they don't come with them anymore because it's changing so often. Do you have digital ones online or do you just not do it because they keep changing so much? We have some information on our website that we publish. Um, and then often people will call us and say, you know, I, I'm going to Nashville or I'm going to Atlanta. You know, what, what is the television, because, because there were changes here, you know, within just the last couple of years, where, where did everything move to? And I can send them a report. It, well, that, that Albuquerque, that, that's what they look like. So the, okay. the red are the channels that you have to stay out of because those are active allocations. And then the white spaces are open. And then off an overlay are, are frequency block information as well. So you have, have an idea of where that all falls. And that's a frequent question. There's a, 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 a website, a user group website called jwsound.net, where most of the sound guys hang out. That question comes up a lot when people are traveling overseas. You know, people, I'm going to Thailand. Does any, who, who's recorded in Thailand in the last year? What, you know, uh, these, this, these are my frequencies. Do you think I'm going to have any problem? The other thing is, is like, uh, I, if you go to New York, New York City and you record in Times Square, they have a frequency coordinator in Times Square. Oh. So you have to check in with him 
and tell them what frequencies you have, you know, because Times Square, that's like the epicenter for frequency use in the world. I mean, like everything is being used. Uh, by the way, another quick note about the newer transmitters. Aren't they spaced 50? Uh, they, they'll they're... adjust, they'll tune 25 or 100 kilohertz steps. R right. So mine are 75, right? Uh, 100. Over, hun, mine are 100 it, it, steps. Yeah, if you don't have the 25 kilohertz right. offset, then you've only got 100. So, so uh, anyway. Not so there's spectrum that, that you can't tune to, basically, if, if it's. Right. Because, yeah, some of the older equipment, it's, they tune wider steps, and now we've gone to more narrower steps. Okay, so we're going to get into using this stuff. <laughs> so uh, we picked a frequency here. Uh, what's with the lighting in this place? Oh, it's terrible. <laughs> um, let's see, I think I picked channel two here. Uh, it says, okay, so on my um, transmitter here, Okay, here, here is the receiver, 57600. Okay, it's also, it also, they're also numbered and lettered. So you can use the actual frequency number or you can use the, what do you call that number? The number? Uh, number. Hex, we call it a hex code. A hex number. So yeah. on my um, transmitter here, I'm gonna go uh, menu, go down to frequency, select, um, and I'm gonna go down, I'm going down here. Can you see the numbers changing? I'm trying to match the mm -hmm. bottom number. Yeah, okay. 576. And the hex number will change as well. Yeah, yeah, see the, the, before, the yeah. About that. Okay. Am I there yet? This stuff is not set up for us seniors. <laughs> okay, there I am. So, now I can go back here. Oop, what is that? Okay, hold on, let me make sure I'm on. Uh, wait. Try to turn back on. Okay, I'm on, all right? And here on my receiver, I have this indicator. You, can you get in here and look? Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm on full, full RF, because I'm right next to the unit. The next thing I'm gonna do, once I have that settled, is I'm gonna plug a mic in here. Use my pretty white microphone. Hello, test, 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 test. Test, 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 test. Okay, it's really low here. Test, 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 test. Okay, it also gives me an audio indicator. Hello, oh. hello, 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 hello. And uh, it, it gives me, um, I'm pretty low here on the receiver, which is all good. I mean, good, I, I kind of don't want to be maxing out clipping. The, the clipping, the, you know, hitting the transmitter too hard and the receiver too hard because when I come over here to my, uh, recorder, I can see that I have plenty of, of gain available here at the recorder. So it's usually best to go safe on this part and bring up what levels you need to bring up here at the recorder, okay? This is, uh, let's see here, okay. Um, what next? Um, I tell you what I'd like to do next is give you guys uh, a couple of contacts, which I brought somewhere. Over here, here you go. Okay. Okay, these are called contacts. This is another company, not Electrosonics. And uh, these are in-ear monitors. And uh, oh, the brand again? Contact. Oh, 
Who's that? All right, here, you can have that one. Okay. See if that one works. Um, here's another one. Can you hear anything? <laughs> <laughs> Let me, uh, let's see, let's talk into that transmitter. Uh, okay, uh, can you hear me now? Hello, hello? Who's breaking up? Hello, hello, hello? Test, test, test. Nothing. Uh, let's see, which, uh, hold on. Uh, what channel is that to, to, they should be on, make sure, 60. Okay, hold on, let me try this one. Hold on, let me try this one. I think I'm getting. Oh yeah, I hear that. You hear that? I do. Hello. You hear me talking? Very clear. All right. Test, 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 test. Okay, hold on, let me, this one's, oh, this one's go. Okay. Okay, hold on. Uh, hello, hello, okay, here's another one, there you go, all right. Uh, so typically, um, can you hear? Put 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 them on. What? Is it like left or right or something? No, no, no. It's mono. All mono. All right. Can you hear me? All right. So typically, there's going to be other people around who need to listen. You know, so you give them. In this case, Comtex. I also have Electrosonics IFBs, <laughs> which I didn't bring. All right. So we're doing. How are we doing? We're doing good on time. All right. Um, I'm going to do. Um, uh, all right. Let's do. Putting the pack on. Let's do that. Okay. So. Um, I guess I'm going to have to do this to myself. Sorry? Oh, yeah, no, that's fine. Um, so I tell you what, I sure have a lot of pieces here. All right, so I'm going to put this pack. Uh, do you mind being the guinea pig? Okay. So. Uh, he has the classic wardrobe. <laughs> so, uh, um, for a guy. So, we're going to put this mic on you. Now, what I would pro probably do, first of all, I'm going to turn this down, is unplug this and get you to feed the mic down your sh front of your okay. shirt. Yeah, yeah, just all the way down. Keep going. All right, and the mic's going to come out here. Uh, I'll go this way. Sorry. Okay. All right, and then we're going to go around here. Okay. We'll take our transmitter, plug the mic back in, and uh, let's turn this way. I'm going to put this in the small of his back here. Now we're not thinking 
that this is like a theatrical situation, OK? Because okay? I might do, there's uh, a little bit more on trying to hide the pack, OK? But if, you know, right now his shirt is kind of blousing kind of nicely, you know. He could probably walk around with that on a set, and we, and we wouldn't see it. So now we just need to attach the mic. So get out our trusty transfer. Just put a piece on. Let's see here. Are you hairy chested? Yeah. OK. Some actors shave their chest. Mm -hmm. So we're just going to go and find a nice spot right in his pecs. We're just going to tape it on. OK? Come on. You got your shirt. All right. Hear that? Yeah, yeah, but you're not going to do that while you're talking, all right? So now we have the wire. Now we can't leave the wire like that, so we're going to want to hide the wire. And typically what we're going to do is, you know, we can't kind of leave it here in the front, right? Because that might be seen. So generally what we do is grab it and come up to the side and tape it right there on the side. And then this little piece that we're just going to tuck in here. OK, <laughs> another note. Now that I've done that, uh, very that mic's not on, right? Yeah, uh, hold on. There you go. Now oh, it's on. Yeah, it's on. OK. So another note here, very important note, which I kind of skipped. Um, if you're going to be getting in people's faces and doing this stuff, you have to be clean, OK? Like clean fingernails, OK? Um, like um, typically, if this were a theatrical situation, I might do this. I might have to wear this. And oh, these are dried out already. Anyway, gloves. I have a question. Would okay. Be more of a modern thing, or sorry, do the COVID, or do you do this naturally before even? No, this is a COVID thing. Okay. Uh, you know, on uh, most theatrical sets, if I'm going to get this close to the actor, I've got to suit up. Okay. okay, just so you know, I'm fully vaccinated, <clears throat> and I've been tested. On film sets, they're testing everybody every couple of days, so so I'm not going to wear this. But anyway, man, oh, there's there's stuff on here. Anyway, all right. So um, um, I would get suited up. You don't want to walk up to somebody dirty, okay? Uh, you know, well, um, you know, when on a, in a theatrical situation, you're allowed to buy expendables, and you know, um, you know, working on westerns and stuff like that, we buy boxes of hand wipes and stuff like that, and you know, you try and stay as clean as you can and clean all the gear up and stuff like that. You 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 have to be clean if you're going to be around people, okay? Are there All right. ever issues, and I'm sure it's, you know, probably preference of the talent, but, you know, you wouldn't have a, a male uh, lab up, a female? Good question. Uh, I, I, um, there's many different ways that that happens. Uh, generally speaking, I try and have a woman on my crew, and the woman's going to a, a bit, uh, basically wire the women. But uh, another step in the process is that um, you would hand off the pack to their, their, that woman character's dresser, and they could put the pack on them on the trailer. So, 
and, so a and part, like a wardrobe. Is right, a wardrobe right. person. Gotcha. That makes they sense. They would put they would put the whole thing on, and maybe the microphone would just be hanging out. So then they come to the set. Now that's another good point, which is um, another good advantage of Electrosonics is they have this thing called Electro Remote, another app. And uh, this has this sleep function. Where did we go? Okay. So what I can do is I can pull the packs out, right? I can turn everything on back at the cart, and then I can sleep the packs. So they're basically turned off. That's good for several reasons. One, it's saving the battery. And two, it's guaranteeing the privacy of the actress or actor. So then when they come to the set, we unsleep them. And then the, the woman on my crew, if I have one, and luckily I've had many, they can go and do the final little trimming. And also, I'm talking to her as she's putting the mic on and stuff. And the actress then is walking around, and I'm saying, oh, it sounds OK. It sounds clear. No, it's a little scratchy. Go look at it again. Adjust this, adjust yeah, yeah, yeah. that. OK? It's a good question. Now, <clears throat> also with the guys, they generally like to wire, get wired before they come to the set, too. And now, l let's look at that a little bit more while we're on this is... David, could you, could you sleep his uh, mic for us? Uh, I'm, so I'm, uh, okay, uh, let me make sure that pack sleeps. That one may not. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that one doesn't sleep. Um, well, we can generate the tones if you want. Yeah. Did that? I think I had my turn, my, um, hold on here. There you go. All right. You hear that? Yeah, I heard that. All right. And then there's unsleep. So that saves so much time and, and yeah. heartache and headache to mm -hmm. be able to just, instead of changing batteries out constantly, yeah. just to be able to sleep that transmitter while it's on an actor. Right. These are a little cheaper models of the uh, than the SMs. These are only one power, 50 milliwatts. They have little switches on them. These are meant for, you know, the church settings and stuff like that, where people can turn up lectures, things like that. I use them on uh, on um, one man band stuff. If I'm just doing an interview with somebody, a sit down interview or something like that, I don't need to use an SM. I can use this. It's go. perfectly fine. Yeah. Documentaries as well, like yeah. running gun. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. Now. Uh, while we're on, um, let's see, let's, uh, uh, let's go on and do a little bit more with your microphone. Okay. Let's look at some of the other rigging stuff that I have here. Okay. You guys can come over here and look at this. This is just a bunch of different rigging stuff, okay? Uh, you, you can touch any of these. Moleskin, some of these things, correct? Yeah, these these are just these are not actually moleskin. They're just little pieces of sticky tape. Okay. And then this is for wind. For the wind. For yeah, that's we call those furries. And you'd put that on the, the mic. Right? Yes, yes. So, uh, you, hey, pull that lav off you. Where's that? Just from the bottom. Just pull it off. Well, tape. Yeah. Grab the whole thing. Like a band-aid. Yep. Yep. Doesn't so hurt. Take it off. <laughs> difference. <laughs> Um, I do, do you want? Uh, no, we'll just okay. leave it there. All right. Okay, so here's what we do. We take a little sticky like this. This is another way of doing this. We're going to put this on here like that. Okay, furry. It's really, the wind is blowing really hard outside. Which it does in New Mexico. <laughs> Relentless. <laughs> All right, put that back on yourself. Where about the center of it was? Yeah, I think down here, like right, right here. in your solar yes. plexus. Is that the solar plexus? The journal yeah. area? <laughs> yeah. All right, so now we're, we're wind protected, okay? Right. Um, now, why don't we do this? Um, why don't you see how far you can walk? Why don't you head out that way? And uh, 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 well, here, you come over here. Take off your headphones. 
Okay, put on my headphones. You can just leave them on. Just, yeah, here. Okay. So why don't you talk? Testing, testing. Oh, wow, that's very clear. One, two. All right. Why don't you head outside? Keep talking as you go. Tell us, describe where you're going. Testing, going out towards the aviation area, I believe. Seen them. Do we still hear it? Testing. Do you still testing, hear them? Testing. Oh, yeah. Testing. Testing. Sorry. Testing, oh testing, it's still clear. testing, going out to the exit of the back door of the missile room. Testing, testing, testing. All testing, right, that's good. Come on going back. Towards the Alameda Road. That's testing, why you use electrosonics. Testing, <laughs> testing still going. I mean, going back now. It still could have kept going, though, but we're turning around. Uh, Sorry to cut out a little bit right there. Uh, you know, testing, coming back. They're amazing. Testing, testing. 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 Okay. Testing. Come on Come back. back into the classroom now. All right. Still walking now, towards the classroom. Oh, uh, oh. It's, your, it's your headphones. My headphones are still in the back. Now, okay. I'll tell you what. I'm going to put down still going. Okay. Oh, yeah, I can hear the track. Yeah, I was going to go halfway in. Okay. So uh, your, your headphone is feeding back yep. into your microphone, so you it's have right to. Okay, yeah. you can switch and put your headphones back on. Actually, if I were in a skin tight t shirt, peel this off. Let's see. I don't know if I can do this to oh. myself. I also have a hat if you want to show that. Sorry? I have a hat if you want to show that too, where you can hide up herd. Up in the hat? Mm -hmm. uh, Sometimes. Right. I um, can do this to myself. I might have to use you again. I'm going to use you again. Okay. Yeah. David, do you still have your microphone on? Uh, which microphone? Oh, no, I don't. I don't. Let me go get it. Okay, I'm going to come up his back. Like that. And I'm going to go get my microphone. <laughs> Hello. Okay. So, uh, another sneaky way of doing a t-shirt which I like. Peel off some tape. Wow. Okay. So we're up his back and we're going to take the wire here and I'm just going to put it right in the neck of his shirt. And see how I've hidden? Can you see that? Okay. And I'm going to take this piece of tape and tape right over the head of the mic. Then we're going to come along here. And you can hide the wire on there. So go ahead and talk. Testing, testing. So that's testing. another way of doing that. Yeah. If Very if clear. he if that were like a totally sheer type thing. Uh, when you, when you had it yeah. on the chest, yes. on the sternum there, yeah. um, is that something where you're going to pick up heartbeat or You can. Any... I mean, uh, obviously, if he took off running, you could probably hear the heart heartbeat. But that's something. You can come in. No big deal. Um, uh, you know, the, the, um, it, it's very low, and, it, you know, generally they're going to talk over it and stuff. What if, you know, I 
forgive me yeah. for being rude, but like if there's a, a belch or yes, you know, you hear that, anything you know, that you're, you're going to... Well, uh, b before lunch, <laughs> you, you hear a lot of gurgling grumbling, yeah. and stuff like that. Okay, uh, let me see. Now, let's switch. I'm going to change wardrobe. Uh, who can put this shirt on? Is it, I, okay, I, I'll put the shirt on. Do we want to use a mannequin? What? Do we want to use a mannequin? Uh, no, I'll, I'll just put the shirt on. So, David, I've always heard that if you attach the capsule to the skin that you should attach the wire to the skin. And if you attach to the fabric, then you should attach the wire to the fabric as well. Is that something you employ as well? Uh, it, there, it's, there's never an absolute, you know, it's what works, what is quiet and works. All right, so uh, why don't you take that mic off you? Why don't you help him take it off? Oh, yeah, there's this tape right there in the middle. There you go. David, how do you feel about actors taking off their own microphones? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> a, this is right there now. Oh, Take okay. it back off. Should be good. I'm taking a wallet, though. <laughs> okay. All right. Now, here, you keep it. Okay, you take the tape off. Okay, you've had enough instruction. Put it on me. Oh, I no, thank you. No, how about you? You want to put it on me? Sure. Come on. Okay, what, what are you going to do? Somewhere on you? Yeah, hold on. Yeah. Let me give you some tape. Okay. So I took a sound class on my TV. Okay, that's okay. Okay, so I'll go around behind you. Okay. Back pocket, you don't mind? No. Go around your back pocket. No, go ahead. Okay. Comfortable? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can pull it through your shirt. Okay. Come back. Okay. You can you can hear the difference in the fabric. Yeah, mm -hmm. I tried to find my scratchiest shirt. Oh. <laughs> okay, we're way, we're, 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 we're way off. We're, we're off. I remember uh, something with the collar. Yeah, the we'll, we'll get to that. Okay, okay, I'm just wearing a shirt. It's very scratchy, very difficult to make it. A regular shirt. I'm just going to come up the front. And the middle. It's been a while. I didn't know tape it there. Now let's. Uh, we don't need that tape. We can, okay. Get, tape. We can use a sticky. I'll Grab leave. one of those. I'll that leave. guy right there. No, no, it's this one. Okay. Uh, and this goes to the shirt, right? And this goes yeah. to the mic. Yeah. Put it on the mic. Wait. This wait. This part? Yeah. Okay. Stick it on there. Okay. I'm doing the tape in between right here on the crease, right? Go ahead. Should I put it on the front or back? Do you think would be better? Uh, listen, we'll listen. Find and out. Figure okay. it out. So I'm taking it to the front of the shirt between the buttons. Okay. Should be. There we go. All right. How do I sound? Does it sound okay or is it scratchy? It's scratchy. Very little bit. You can definitely hear the yeah. scratch. Okay, wh where do you think it's scratchy? Where, it's it's, I'm not. Face. Okay, uh, how about that? Now I, I pushed it down. Is that better? No. Worse? Well, let's uh, put something in there. You take one of the little. See if we can. Uh, Little dot. All right. Is that any better? Less scratchy? A little bit. A little bit better? A little bit better. All right. Definitely the shirt. Okay. <laughs> They're sticky on you. One. All right. What point will all the sticky start affecting you? Or sticky film? Well, that's actually why you still Ah, okay. Yeah. And then side? Yeah. And then. So, uh, 
pull that off. All right. So we're, we're locked down in there. Yeah. Okay. Now, just so you know, there's another trick you can do. Which is, here, let's take this all off. Take that all off. Is I could possibly sneak that microphone right in there behind a button. Can you see that? Yeah. Yeah. Just hang on the frame. Now, this this shirt is not great for that, but there could be a shirt where something like that would work. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, now let's do um, the next thing is my tie. Where's my tie? Oh, there it is. Okay. All right. What should I do here? I hope I remember how, you probably know how to tie a tie. <laughs> Getting it? Yeah. <laughs> right. So nobody wears except lawyers and FBI agents. My collar down. Okay. Hey, hey, put my collar down. We put it down right. Yes. All right. Okay, classic tie problem. What am I going to do? Okay, what? You're going to run through the shirt like you did, but you're going to hide it inside the loop. There's a, there's a hole with your tie. Okay. Oh, it not. You want to try it? I can try it. Now. You want to use this tape or the sticky? Uh, well, let's get, let's get the mic in there first. Okay. All right, so no, we should come up, up the front, just up the front of my shirt. Like we're doing, like right here. No, no, all the way down. So. All the way down. And all the way up. Is that right here, you think? What? Right here. Uh, up all the way up. Well, wherever you think, you think you can hide it. Do it. Do you see what he's doing? I can. What? Turn? Yeah, just a second. Sorry. Right. Through. Yeah, I think I'll go up real quick. Just for different tires. Right. I right. hope that's them, not us. Hope so. Think you got it? I think so. It's a little, so I'll put some tape on it or a little bit. Uh, how does it sound? Scratchy. Okay. Well, let, let's. Uh, well, we can. Let's put something on it uh, because we probably wouldn't have left it. Hold on. We can put this over here. Okay. Um, I'll put the other all the way up because so right now you can tighten it afterwards. Just hide this right here when you actually oh, yeah? pull it. Go ahead. Go ahead and do it. Let, let's. Uh, now let's see. What can we do? There we go. Uh, that that's a noisy tie, isn't it? It is. I wonder what it's it is. Also, you know, you're really screwed if I have a beard. Yeah. You know, this. You know. Talk about scratchy. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Let's let's try this. 
Is it working? It's working. Pretty quick and dirty. Yeah. Okay, that's a good one. Um, now, why would I put it like behind my tie? You hear the scratching behind yeah, the tie of it tie. moving back and forth. Okay. Um, now, another possibility, by the way, Now, is this a polyester shirt, David? What do you, I don't, I'm not sure. I don't think so. It's very scratchy. It's a, what, what is this kind of satiny shirt called? They're called something. Who's a wardrobe person? Plastic. <laughs> <laughs> um, but definitely the natural fibers are better for wiring than, yes. than silks and but you're always, polyesters. You know, if somebody's going to wear a suit, they're probably going to have a pretty heavily starched shirt or something like that. Now, another thing we can do here. I'm going to sacrifice my coat here. Let's see here. Oh, check this out. All right, you're going to love this. Look at this coat. Look at that. There's a little yeah. hole that goes all the way through. So I could take this. It's in here. Take the microphone, put it through this little hole. And take that mic and tape it in there. Something like that using the black mic, that might work, right? Yeah. That would work that's, pretty good. That's actually the best so far. Yeah. All right. Say it again. That's actually the best so far. Now, I had this, uh, I had this problem big time guys with military uniforms, you know, those heavy double breasted coats. There was no way to put anything here. So we went on the inside pocket, cut a little hole put the mic right there, you know, and it sounded golden. Now, <laughs> while we're on this, um, we should talk about proximity and the fact that, you know, talking in the microphone, put your earphones back on, okay. Talking to the microphone out here sounds a lot better than when it gets in here, right? It's totally different. So that's just something that you're going to have to learn to live with. Right? Because you're limited by where you can put the mic. Generally speaking, you know, up in here, you know, it's not as good as it is down here. Sometimes they sound fine even if they're way down here. Yeah. If somebody's projecting, you know, here I am here I am with the mic down here. Yeah, you can you can hear it booming right. when you're closer. Uh -huh. Okay. All right. So, how are we doing so far? We're doing good. <laughs> Can I take a break? By all means, by all means. Um, we'll take just uh, uh, five minutes. And, five minutes. And come back so. with David Brownlow. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I guess, you know, I've, I've often wondered how you overcame clothing, you know, wrestling on clothing and stuff like that. Uh -huh. So. Well. You know, there are some people who are just geniuses at it, you know. There's a boom man here in town named Jay Collins who's just phenomenal. You know, what he can do, you know, to right. put a mic on somebody. And then we, we you know, uh, we haven't talked about, but uh, a lot of actors, you know, like when I was doing Cowboys and Aliens, you know, we wired up uh, Harrison Ford's vest. Right, and uh, the wardrobe people put the microphone like right here on the vest, mm -hmm. and you know, it, was, it was permanently wired. At the end of the night, we just took the pack and he handed off the vest. He came to the yeah, set the you. next day. Yeah, just plug the plug back, back in. in, and you're ready to go. He was. I guess some 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 uh, talent, you know, actors actresses have their own transmitters in some cases. Mm -hmm. 
I never even heard that. Yeah, they just, sure. They just sure. turn out their own equipment and they just yeah. bring that to the set. So. Right. Um, you know, I heard, you know, Russell Crowe, his whole thing now is that um, he, he demands that everything's pre-wired and he can't feel anything. So, the, you know, they sew the mics into his shirts and things like that and stuff. And he's, you know, he goes to set and he goes like that. I feel it. And that's it. That's it. That's it. That's done. <laughs> <laughs> All right. He's getting set up, but we can keep talking. So I'm going to plug in a boom here. And we're going to talk about this for a second. No, you, uh, I'll, I'll let you know. Um, oh, sorry, I was thinking. All right, another thing I have here are um, belts and straps. Just come and look at this. Okay. I have everybody over here come on so these are uh, belts and straps okay so this and unplug this I'll come over to you guys you can take this put this pouch I hope okay there he goes let me sit down there Oh yeah, I'm going to sit down there. <laughs> so this is going to put it on my ankle. Now, now hopefully I have my bullet in here. Here it is. My bullet. I hope this is long enough. Microphone plugs into both. Magic part. Bullet goes down the leg. Uh, you, if somebody makes them and you can buy them and there's a guy in Santa Fe who makes, makes them with fishing weights. So, um, a, a, a guy who makes like a fiberglass stick that you can stick down. So now, now I'm all mic'd up and I'm walking around. A lot of people like the pack in their ankles. You guys can put your headphones back on. I would say that most people, most guys probably like the ankle rig. And um, also, you know, um, let's see, who else, you know? Somebody with totally sheer clothing on, you might have to go to the ankle and stuff like that. Okay. Well, I know like uh, female presenters, like on, just like on a no local news and weather set, uh -huh. they'll often have their transmitter down here because uh -huh. they're wearing a dress. They don't have any pockets, right? Right. So, and then we sell like extra long, sixty-inch mic cables. Right. So they they you know the, the mics up here runs all the way down. Right. You know, to the transmitter down here. Yeah. Now we do have. Okay. So there's. Let's do that. Okay, there's that one. All right. And what else do we have? 
I have a waste pack. Here's another one. I think this is meant for a smaller transmitter. But anyway, you get the get the point. A waste pack. So how much do you or your your crew work with the wardrobe team in order to coordinate all of this? Well, from, you know, in prep, you, the, you know, the utility person will talk to the wardrobe people. You know, you got to get a handle on what, it, what the wardrobe is, you know. Is it a lot of training to, with each or do some, most of the wardrobe people kind of have an idea? Now they pretty much have an idea. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Every, everybody's kind of, the big change that's happened, which probably you don't even notice to you, but to me, is that the casts on like a typical, t like Big Sky. I don't know if you watch that TV. Mm -hmm. I mean, there are like 12 characters. And, you know, in every scene, there's like an army of people running around. It didn't used to be like that. You know, uh, so it's, you know, um, everybody's gotten used to this. Uh, but what's the other one they do here? Roswell. Right. Did you ever watch Roswell? Yeah. Have you watched that lately? I lost the guy that only brought before. Uh, it's really strange because the characters talk really fast. Very odd. Uh, anyway, uh, not that that makes a difference. But the other thing is, you know, multiple cameras, you know, mul you know, um, multiple cameras with multiple sizes and stuff like that. <clears throat> okay, now, uh, okay, back to our mic. Okay, you're going to be our subject again. Uh, uh, more send that up. What? A quick question. Yes. So I was asking about for mice. Usually, I know before they try to make it so people can talk at the same time. Is that more of a modern thing where they have like two people jumbling? A anybody can talk anytime they want. But these especially. No, just oh, no. just generally. Yeah. These days, no, you know, if you're working on a set in a theatrical situation, you never, you know, I try not to talk to the actors at all. Mm -hmm. If something happens, you go to the director. I meant, I meant with the like dialogue during the scene. The overlapping. Oh, yeah. That was an old. That's an old-fashioned thing. That went out the window years ago. Okay. It's just yeah. let them yap. All right. It's <laughs> not, you know, it's not your problem. You know, the, the director can hear it. The director's a filmmaker. The director's made films and edited films. You don't have to give them a class on how to do sound. Mm -hmm. You know, your job is to make it audible. Okay. You know, um, if, you know, the uh, things I've talked about are diction. You know, some, you know, sometimes you can't understand people. Mm -hmm. And sometimes the directors have the scripts in their head so they're not actually listening when somebody talks garbled because they've written it and heard it. They think they're talking OK. And when in fact they're not. So then you might go to the director and say, I didn't understand a word they just said. Is that something you would put on your notes or is that something that you would you would address uh, immediately? Immediately. Okay. immediately. Yeah, I can't understand a word they're saying. You wouldn't uh, you know, use a little you know, tact and say, you know, go again for no, sound. No, 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 you go or... and just tell the director, I can't understand a word they're saying. <laughs> okay. All Sorry, right. just on that too, a question would be, yep. so more modern days, like in a lot of times the child will fix it in post ADR. So what do you, what's your uh, yeah, yeah. on that uh, later? Uh, you know, uh, the, I, um, uh, uh, you know, people used to be sticklers for that stuff and it doesn't matter anymore. You know, I, I, I don't have any problem giving the post guys work to okay. do. Yeah. I mean, they're, <laughs> they're sitting around in an air conditioned studio back in Hollywood <laughs> with nothing to do. With nothing to do. <laughs> so, you know, if, if, there's, if there's something wrong, again, this is a theatrical situation. Mm -hmm. If we're just out doing stuff, we've got to get, the sound yeah. has to be usable. You okay. know, 
But in a theatrical situation, again, uh, well, I was doing Roswell for a day and, um, you know, they've been filming a while. So everybody's very comfortable. Yeah. So there was a, there's a big bar scene where a lot of the movie takes place and they just call me in for a day for some reason. I don't know why. So I go there and they set up all these shots. It's going well. Now they're going to do a close up, and the AD is, you know, he's kind of tuned into what he's doing. And like everybody in the bar is talking or making noise or playing pool, and we're doing a close up. I'm like, I'm like, please, you know, get everybody to be quiet. You know, it's just a close. What are we doing here? You know, yeah. and it's just because you know, that's they needed the reminder. Oh, okay. That's all. You know, it's like... to speak up is what you're saying for sound. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, in that case, TV is run by the producers. So I, I said something to the producer, look, you know, this sure doesn't sound like a close-up because <laughs> there was too much background noise. Things like that. Okay. Anyway, here, we're going to put this Thank back you. on. We're yep. going to put this back on you. Right. Here. It's quick and dirty. Yep. Oh, sure. There you go. You're going to be a... So how has that been received by the producers? They did it. They just did it, you know. And put it back on your chest okay. there. Yeah. yeah. I mean, they kind of didn't know me from Adam. You know, I was oh. kind of like, you know, kind of the new guy. So... Uh, <laughs> So no, but I, I wasn't. A, uh, no, I, I I spoke up. You know, there was another shot we were doing outside with a squeaky dolly. You know, I'm like, yeah. Have you ever excuse me, dolly? does anybody hear that? You know, <laughs> and again, you know, they're so tuned into their thing that they're not they they're not paying attention. If it were a feature of film, that would have never happened to begin with. I mean, the first time the dolly went eat. First of all, the grips would have never let it happen right. on a film. That's what I was yeah. going to ask. But on television, you know, they're there. That's what the strike's all about. You know, they're there 14 hours a day, day after day. Everybody gets tired. Okay. They don't care. Mm. You know, so. Yeah, if you if you don't care about your work, then yeah. it's going to sell. All right, so here's what we're going to do now. We're going to mix a yeah. boom and a lav. You're, you're, you're going to help me do this. No, 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 you're going to come here. Okay, you're right there. Right here. Back up a little bit. Okay. All right. Uh, let's see. Uh, you, you need to come over here. Okay, you're going to put the headphones on. Okay. So, for, okay, let's talk, uh, talk into the boom. Testing. Just. Testing. Testing. Okay, that's just the boom. Keep going. Okay, go, let me do it. Okay. You give me the mic. <laughs> okay. Uh, so here's what you're going to do. Here's what I want you to do. You're going to go, here, this is the boom channel. Okay. Right here. And this is the lav. Lav, 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 lav. Got it? Okay. Lav. Boom. Okay. Okay. So I'm going to go over here. Okay, start with the boom. Okay, can you hear the boom? Yes. Yeah, how's it sound? It should good. sound pretty good. Yeah. Yeah, it sounds excellent. Okay. Okay, turn the boom down. And bring up the lav. Okay, here's the lav. Here's the lav. They sound different? Yeah, a little bit different. Okay. Test, test, test. Here's the lav. Here's the lav. How's the lav sound? How's the lav sound? Okay, sounds go back good. to the boom. Back to the boom. Back to the boom. Turn back the lav off? Yeah, turn the lav off. Boom, 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 boom. Boom. Okay, let the other guy in there. Give him the headphones. Okay, uh, show him the knobs. Uh, boom, lav. So boom, that's lav. on, that's okay. off. Okay, okay uh, 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 turn, uh, just listen to the boom. Just listen to the boom. How's the boom sound? How's the boom sound? Sound okay? Yeah. Sound okay? Sound How's okay. the boom sound now? A little distant? Yeah, not a little pub, distant. Okay. Turn the boom off. Okay, bring up the lav. 
Lavalier, lavalier, lavalier. Lavalier, does it sound a little clearer, more present and stuff? Yeah. Okay, okay, now turn the lav down. Okay, and you're gonna to put the earphones on both ears. Okay, both hands, one hand on the boom. Okay, bring, bring up the, turn down the lav. Okay, bring up the boom so you can hear me talk. Can you hear me talk? Okay, it sounds a little thin. Okay, right fill it up with the lav. Bring up the lav until it sounds better. Bring up the lav until it sounds better. So you're going to use the lav to sort of like fill the boom. Got how that works? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Let you try it now. Okay. Start with just the boom. Just the boom. The boom's too far away. We're shooting a western. I'm Clint Eastwood. I'm way over here. Now I don't want to have with Clint Eastwood doing my Western, turn down the boom all the way and bring up the lav. Okay, now I don't want Clint Eastwood in this Western to sound like he's on a lavalier microphone, okay? Because he's Clint Eastwood. So now you're gonna bring up the boom a little bit and try and make Clint Eastwood sound a little better. You know, you're, okay? You might, you might uh, let, let's uh, turn the lav down all the way. Okay, bring up the boom. Boom, 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 boom. Boom, now fill with the lav. Fill with the lav a little bit to make me sound a little better. See how that works? Yeah. Okay? So that's why in today's theatrical situation, everybody gets a wire all the time, unless they don't want it. <laughs> <laughs> but this is kind of typically how you do it. You know, you always have a boom running. There's always a boom up. If nothing else, just so you can hear the horses galloping by in the background. You, you know, maybe I'm out here, and you know, the western town is going, and I'm miking Clint, and you know, I'm using the boom to bring up a little bit of the background so that Clint doesn't sound like he's on a wireless microphone. Okay, you get that? Do you ever use multiple booms? Of course, all the time. You know, whenever you, can, I always have two booms ready to go. All right. So say, from my understanding, you always want to boom over a law if you can. If you don't think one or the other, what's well, your Well, what do you think? Here, mix. All right. <laughs> tell me. Tell me what you think. Turn. I'm just going to talk here. You tell me which one sounds better, the boom or the law. No offense to electrosonics. <laughs> <laughs> boom or law, which sounds better? Boom. Boom. Yeah, there's a lot more present. You know, I mean, the difference in the diaphragm in this microphone and the diaphragm in this microphone, you know, there's a huge thing. All right. Now, other things we can do with this are um, we using these for plant mics. Put your headphones back on. Turn the boom down. Bring up the lav. Can you hear the lav? 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 Okay. Put, take my headphones off. Put your headphones on. Okay. Now, uh, let's see. What else can we do? We can also use this for a plant mic. Okay. So let's say I'm over here and I'm just sitting at this table. Okay. You guys listening? Yeah. Okay. How's that sound? Pretty good. Pretty good. I'm just sitting here at the table. Yeah. So that's another, I don't have to put it on the person. I can use it as a plant. For example, I'm driving around in a car. You know, I could hide this microphone up in the car. So then why, Particularly, yeah. why don't they do that for like sports broadcasters or, what? you know, a live broadcast? Have a, have a plant mic rather than... Because of the crowd noise in the stadium. Well, like if, if they're in the studio, if they're... Yeah, like a like a um, news broadcast. I don't know where they where their mics are. Are they? They're probably lost. Uh, if they're holding a handheld, yeah. a lot of times that's a wired microphone. It's just less frequencies that they got to coordinate. So yeah. A lot of times they'll go wired if they're just in like a, a close camera studio where they're just it's just commentary. It's Terry Bradshaw talking to a head coach. Or right. Like that. Yeah. Hmm. So they, they sometimes that's not wireless. So they'll just have a handheld that they talk talk to. All right. Okay. Now let's uh, also let's look at another situation here. Uh, with my, we're going to use this. I need a couple of batteries. Right. 
Right, right. Yeah. Right. 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 Okay. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. Okay, this is another transmitter. Okay. Uh, this everybody uses wireless boom pretty much all the time now. So we'll try and turn this guy on. Okay, he's on. He's on his power. By the way, let me do that again. You see, we can watch that. Okay, let's watch this boot up. You ready? Can you guys see? Can you see? I, yeah, I see. Huh? All right, we're going to watch it one more time. Electrosonics, uh, compatibility 400, power 100, and the frequency. Okay, so we got to adjust the frequency on this again here. You're going to do it. Okay, let's see. What what uh, what frequency we were at? Five, uh, five six, seven. Uh, I'm sorry, I hit the wrong button. Five, seven, no, four. no, there it is. Five, seven, six. Uh, it should be five, six, seven. No, you're going to adjust it here. Oh, 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 okay. five, seven, six. All right. Now you have to hit the frequency button. Keep going. What's it saying? Oh, yeah, there, there it is. I'm uh -huh. sorry, I'm, I'm upside down. Hold. Now, uh, now go up and down on the arrows. Oops. Hold the frequency button. Now go up and down on the arrows. So with this thumb, hold frequency. Oh, you go, let me hit it again. Okay, there it is. Okay, push. but if I push it again, it's going to change. Uh, it should stay. Okay. There you go. Okay. All right. Five, seven, six? Yeah. Or hex number 80. Can I hold down the arrow to yeah, I think it'll make it go faster? Sure. Five, seven, six. All right, so now we're going to go back. And how do we know we're on the right channel? Because this little indicator, power indicator. Okay, so now we're going to take this. I'm going to take this. Normally we don't do it like this, but I mean, with a wired pole, I mean, we're going to plug this in. Somebody can go to the recorder and adjust the levels. Where am I? All right. Can you hear me? How is it? You can hear the boom? No, 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 you should be able to hear the boom. Test, 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 test. Uh, what happened here? Test, 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 test. Um, test, 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 test. It's not coming out the mix. Yeah, hold on. Oh, that's weird. Um, oh, I'm sorry. My fault. Wrong one. It's now this one. Because there a law. Yes. Okay. You're right. Okay, so now you can see what this gives me. Now I can run all over with the boom. So, you know, if he's talking, I got him here. You guys are talking, those guys in the back are talking. I can move anywhere I want around the set and I'm not tethered by the wire, okay? By the, what, uh, by the way, Let's look at the audio level here. Audio 28, audio 28. There's a little power indicator here, audio 28. 
So I'm not overloading the transmitter. Very important. And let's go over here and look at the receiver. 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 See the little indicator? See the uh, indicator? Yeah. I'm not overloading the receiver. Okay. So now I can adjust my levels here at the recorder. So okay. Like a stream and horror, you have got to worry about right. that. Right. Now, let's do one other thing. Um, okay, I'm going to run outside. And we're going to see how long, how far I can go again. <laughs> yeah. I was almost going down the road for me there, Eddie. Okay, this is going to be an antenna test. Okay, okay, so right now we're just using these two little bitty antennas. Okay, here we go. All right, here I go. I'm going down. How, am I still clear? Am I still clear? I'm here in the big room. I'm yep. still here in the big room. Going through the big room, going through the big room, heading towards the doors, heading towards the doors. Okay, I'm outside. On the way outside. You can hear everything running. How's the RF? Did it hold or did you get any breakups, any dropouts? No anything? I'm he heading back in. Any breakup, any dropouts? Nothing broke up. So really? Away. Damn equipment's too good. Traffic sounds terrible. All right, let's, the other thing I can do here is I can unplug one of my little little whip things here, right? And I'm going to take and plug in this shark fin. This is like a larger antenna for your thing, really? Yes. I could actually wander through the building if you want to. You really? You want to go? I could, yeah, I'll take the boom and I'll just walk through the building. Okay. Um, so that's where you'll really... Well, I like to attenuate all up quite a bit. We, uh, so this, yes. Using an antenna like this can make a big difference. There you go. Okay, so I'm going to go for it now. Wait, let me get this plugged in. Hold on. Okay. I hate these little connectors. What are these little screw-on connectors called? SNNs? SNN. SNN. Yeah. All right, go. Okay. So, How's he doing? Extremely clear. Amazing. He can be a wall over thinking. He can go outside. Out the other side. <laughs> David, can you talk about how antennas work? Nothing. 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 Not even any hits or dropouts. It, it, come here and look at this. You can see. Uh, hold on. Hang on, Doug. Oh, the signal's so good, right? Yeah. The signal's a top thing. It's, it's the drop. big one, the big triangle yeah, here. It's still perfect. Yeah. He's saying he's expecting drop out. Go nothing. get him. Go okay. tell him to come back. <laughs> <That's> perfect. <laughs> I think he's lost. <laughs> so David, can yes, you sir. talk about uh, antennas and how they work, the different types of antennas, that sort of thing? Or? Uh, um, uh, I couldn't lose you. Perfectly clear. <laughs> <laughs> nope. So, too good. And, and that's, you know, you don't have much of an antenna here. This isn't a, the most efficient antenna, so that's the problem with the plug on transmitter. Uh, could you talk a little bit about antennas? Yeah, okay. sure. So, what he's got here is called a log periodic antenna. And this is a high gain antenna. So, it, it actually, normally in an antenna like this, the, there are elements. That is not one of your antennas. That's not this one of this is a, a Wolf Seaberg, <laughs> and it's just a. Um, you can see there's one of those strips, and yeah. there's one. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. So there, it covers different frequency ranges. Oh, okay. All right. So there are elements for different. So an antenna is great for when you're using a frequency agro system like this. You want an antenna that covers the frequency ranges. The that's a, that's a working one, right? And a log periodic antenna actually gives you some passive gain improvements, typically about five to seven dB actually without an RF amplifier. You know, it's just passively giving you additional gain over, and we call this a dipole antenna basically for the most part. So five to seven dB relative to a dipole. Right, is this antenna is actually cut. The size of this antenna is cut to match 
the frequency of this receiver. So it's the length of the Okay, the so right, if I had a different uh, receiver here, I might have a different length little antenna here. Whereas this thing covers the whole range. It covers the whole range and plus you get, because it's directional, like you were saying earlier, it's a directional antenna, you get gain when you're aimed, when you're aimed at the transmitter, you're gonna get five to seven dB additional gain, which can make a big improvement in, you know, in the quality of the audio, the range, you know, everything. Huge, particularly when you're out doing westerns and you got guys on horses and <laughs> riding around and stuff like that. I guess my question would be yes. for one, the receiver for the wireless boom and this, how much are each cost about, or newer ones and older ones, I guess, roughly. Uh, <laughs> this package? Grand. Well, I think um, uh, the, the SRC, I, I think, are around 2500 Yeah, they're about 2500 yeah. receivers. Yeah, the, the, the transmitter the are, are a couple of grand? They're, well, they're about $1,400. Oh, okay, okay yeah. $1,500 yeah. is good, yeah. I would say. Your brand, like the uh, newer ones of these? Uh, yeah, we make an antenna. Very similar to this called an ALP 500, and that's uh, three to four hundred dollars. And then we have powered antennas, which are about seven or eight hundred dollars. Okay. And a lot of people make antennas. I have bunches of these. I don't, I don't know why I grabbed this one. This one was extremely inexpensive, <laughs> but <laughs> I have a bunch of uh, Electrosonics antennas. I have, I have many, many shark fins antennas, and I just grabbed the first one I grabbed mm -hmm. and went out the door. Shark so, fin is the, shark the nickname? Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. You know, I, I, uh, by the way, the powered antennas, um, uh, um, I, 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 we're pretty lucky here in New Mexico because we have so much wide open space and not a lot of frequencies uh, banging down on us. Um, in, um, um, in crowded RF, environments yeah, like right. Los Angeles or something like that, a powered antenna might help you out okay. in terms of, you know, you focusing in on just the frequencies that you want. Right. Out here, we're pretty lucky, okay. you know. Yeah, you the By Is the that way, why the aliens chose New, New Mexico? Mexico. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, I had a friend who uh, uh, does the big political conventions and he did Democratic convention, Republican convention in like some mega, you know, indoor, um, uh, uh, like, like stadium, okay. right? Arenas. Like, like, yeah. like the Superdome yeah. or something. Dome. And he had two antennas. He had one of these up in the roof okay. and one somewhere else, unpowered. And it sounded great. It was fine. It was fine. By the way, I'll tell you a quick story about that. <laughs> he was doing the Republican convention. This is one war story. I get one war story <laughs> because we're talking about RF. Okay, so he's doing this. He lives in Boston. He's working for Fox News and he's doing the convention, the Republican presidential convention where Giuliani was running. Giuliani and, and uh, the guy from Arizona I forget, there were like seven or eight guys. Um, who, who's the McCain, McCain and uh, that, that group, right? Okay. So <laughs> um, they're gonna go, it's in Iowa, it's right off the bat. And normally when they do the thing, um, you know, they have podiums and there's podium mics. Mm -hmm. And so it's all hardware, beautiful, not a problem. For some reason, the art director said, no, 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 no podium mics, it looks bad. I want wireless mics on all the candidates. And my friend said, well, okay, we can do that. You know, not a problem. So, <laughs> so he's got the seven wireless mics going. They're all sitting in the truck. They're out in Iowa. Things going along, it's beautiful. And uh, all of a sudden, you know, he's, they're all kind of distracted and stuff. He kind of glances out of the side of his eyes and he sees the little screen, well, it's actually on one of those big receivers, and it sort of goes like that. And he's like, wow, what is that, you know? And they're talking, talking. Suddenly, there's a little interference here, and he looks over again, and the whole thing goes, and a giant thunderstorm is coming. Oh, wow. 
<laughs> and you could see you could see, you could see the uh, electromagnetic you know the lightning starting hitting and and the, and he's oh my god and so this thunderstorm's getting closer and closer and some of the mics are starting to go particularly really Rudy Giuliani so right when Giuliani is giving a speech about god the thunderstorms right overhead and his mic goes out completely and the campaign managers come flying into the trailer. What the hell's happening? And so he, he's wiped out completely. And event, then the storm moves away and everything comes back. Well, everybody says that that's the moment that Rudy Giuliani lost the election. <laughs> because, anyway. Um, and he'd go on to have many more moments. <laughs> um, okay, any more qu questions? I'm kind of running out of gas. What time is it? Oh, man, I got... All right. Um, anybody got any questions? Anybody? Um, I have a question. How much of... I, you know, your company's been around a very long time. How much of the... Um, innovation that you guys are getting it comes from movie industry here in New Mexico? Uh, well, I wouldn't say it. It's, it is, it's the movie industry in general. So, so is your material mostly? Okay. Yeah, so the film, film and television, a lot of the innovations that we've come up with have been driven by requests from production sound makers like David. You know, like the plug-on transmitter, for instance. That was something we developed when we first off of that. So maybe do you think that you've driven the movie industry in New Mexico then, rather than the other way around? Well, the, the industry has driven the technology that we've developed. So the film industry here, while it's been here a long time, it was still mostly based in, when I started with the company in the 1990s, most of it was still based in Hollywood. So you're still dealing with production sound mixers and people out in Hollywood for the most part. I'll, I'll tell you a story about that. You know, uh, Mark Ulano, who's a sound mixer, he was president of the Sound Local for 10, 20 years or something. He mixed the film Titanic. And what was that, 2000 something? Yeah, so 2000 right? or 99? Well, 90, well, well yeah. you know, and that, he, he replaced another, the Mexican sound crew who started the film. And I, you know, I don't know if you know about James Cameron, but he can go psycho on the <laughs> set. <clears throat> a, lot, a lot of directors do. Don't take it personally. So he just like went nuts on these guys. And so they asked Mark to come in. And that was the first show that Mark used a wireless boom on. And he said he could not have done that show without a wireless boom. You know, it was like too big, too spread out, running around, and stuff, and you know that uh, you know hmm. he's been wireless boom ever since. So, you know the technology, you know, is kind of keeping pace with the, you know, how it filming is. Yeah, how filming is being done. You know, again, you know things are much more dynamic now than the, and more characters. You know, it sounds uh, at the home and yeah. Yeah, so. watch over films and. A lot of times, there's a lot of solitary actors, and and you know there just there was a guy with a wired boom, yeah. you know, doing the audio, and and that was the only way they could do it. Yeah, this is in the 60s, right? Yeah. So, well, 70s, 80s. Yeah, right. You know, I just I noticed it more on the other uh, end. It, it just aren't as dynamic as as you would see now. Yeah. Now you got all this POV stuff going on. Yeah. And of course, the actors got to be wireless because they're just they're all yeah. over the place. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, um, yeah. Plus, it covers you. You know, I mean, you know, when, uh, you, you know, you, uh, the other thing is the other big innovation, of course, is multi-track recording. So, that's another big thing. So, you know, I can have a boom on the whole time. I don't necessarily have to put it into the mix, you know, but it's always there for the editors to use and all the right. It's also and, a quick way to do room tone when people don't realize it, right? Right, you don't need to do room tone anymore. How many separate tracks does this cover? Uh, that's a six track recorder. Six so if you don't yeah. need to do room tone anymore, why do we? If you don't have this technology, I'm guessing. Or, no, I, I, you know, you, um, uh, well, 
you know, when you call rolling or something, generally I ro I've, I've been rolling for a while anyway, <laughs> you know. Okay. So um, there's, you know, going to be a moment there, you know, a few seconds or whatever uh, between the slate and, and action or whatever, or before they say action or whatever, that's plenty enough and time. That counts as yeah, time. sure. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. Any other questions? <laughs> yes. Sorry, my last one. Yeah. <laughs> I'll keep no, you all day. Uh, I know, I'm joking. Uh, I guess it would be what would be like your t advice for a new like sound maker or someone trying to get into the sound and film? Uh -huh. What would you be your like, solid uh, advice? Probably or a couple of things, just a <clears throat> golden rule, I guess. Well, you know, our, you can make application to the local. And you, you guys are really lucky because, you know, the, the film business is, is just about to take off in mm -hmm. such a major way here with the studios. <clears throat> Plus, you get to work under the new contract <laughs> <laughs> with the 10, hopefully, 10 hopefully. hour turnaround, b better pay. Not 14 hours. Uh, yeah. You know, um, uh, so, you know, you just got to make uh, application to the local. <clears throat> you get on a stand standby list. And then you've got to, you know, try and find it. You know, uh, I just brought uh, uh, this woman in. Um, she has, she worked in art department because art, the biggest part of the local are the carpenters and the painters. That's probably seven or 800 guys right there, guys and girls, mm -hmm. a lot of women painters and mm -hmm. stuff like that. And so she's working on the set, painting a set or doing carpentry or something and maybe she goes she got to know this guy Stephen Chakerin who's a boom man and I had this show coming up and there's so many shows going on uh, I needed a person so I have a list of all the sound people I so I sent out an email does anybody know anybody who wants to get in and Steve Stefan wrote me back and said there's this lady um, and give me her phone number I gave her a call I met her I liked her and we did um, SpongeBob SquarePants Live together. Bikini Bottom. Yeah. Bikini yeah. Bottom. yeah, yeah. That, there was, they shot a little live action piece that's going to go inside the. Was that the one with David Hasselhoff? I think? No, this no. was with. Uh, yeah, totally separate. yeah, this is with um, Wanda Sykes. Okay. So she was great. You know, she was very smart, got a degree. Um, I We prepped for a day. I showed her the basics. You know, obviously her first day on set was probably pretty nerve wracking. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, but by the second or third day, you know, she figured out what we needed to do. And, um, you know, by the end of the first week, she she had it down for what it was a good show to start on. It was very easy. We're all on stage. There were only four characters. You know, she basically took care of Wanda and the other female actress and stuff, you know, and, um, you know, she Anyway, she worked out great, okay. so she's in. Boom, just like that. So the networking space is probably the way anyway, to get into like, the sound stuff of the network is overall vulnerable for, I think, all film, right? Sorry? You know, contacts uh, and networking? Yes. Okay. Yeah, you need to, you know, again, you need to make application to the local, mm -hmm. which you can do cool. on their website. And then you need to find people who are in the local, you know, because if, you know, find somebody who's going to hire you to do something, grip or elect. I, I've gripped movies. I've, I've so been, you get your foot in the door. Yeah, yeah, uh, just, yeah. Just becoming a boom operator is that a good way to break in? Well, utility is where you start. Yeah, boom off. Boom is a little sure. different. What about yeah. non union stuff? They have like the forty-eight hour film festivals sure, and things that like stuff. that. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Whatever you can do to learn the gear. Like an actor you know, we're a little. It, it's a little difficult for sound people because really the only way to learn it is to do it. Gear, you know, it's end. like, I mean, I, I've showed you guys a lot of stuff and you can go out and kind of do, um, you know, little films and stuff mm -hmm. like that and learn the kind of basic recording. But what booming is kind of a do, little bit trickier than that because, you know, <laughs> you're the person, you know, you're out there. You're, Tim will attest to this, <laughs> you know, you're the person, you're, you're out there. You're the furthest one out there you know, a lot of times and stuff like that. So you really got to be on your game know what you're doing. and know what you're doing. And uh, so, you know, in utility sound, you know, you, there are a lot of opportunities to hold the boom where you do two booms and stuff like that. So you can kind of build up. Your, okay. your, uh, um, 
since, Thank you so much. Since uh, you know you got your start in the '80s, how long did it take you to to build up in the '70s? In the '70s. <laughs> in the '70s. How long did it take you to build up a you know a respectable package? Um, I you know um, well it was much different. Right? You know I bought a reel-to-reel -reel tape recorder. I actually got I actually went to this place called. Uh, Audio Services, which is now called Location Sound, which is still in business. And the the business really exploded in the 80s, a lot like it's doing now. In fact, it's almost exactly the same. In the 80s, it was cable television and video cassettes. Mm -hmm. Allowed the industry to, you know, quadruple in size. In now, it's the online, right? The last 10 years, all this, you know, forget cable. Streaming. You know, they are, streaming's everything. Right. So. Exactly. There's, you know, a huge demand for content. So in the 80s, you know, I went to Location Sound and I knew the owner of the company. He gave me a $5,000 tape recorder. I said, here, take it, pay me when you got the money. Wow. Is that Dick Toppin? Yeah, Dick. Yeah. So that was another special so, yeah. Wow. There we have about five more minutes. Okay. One, one more I'm, I'm good. <laughs> Thank you so much. Yeah, yeah. Thank you very much. I, I, I hope you got something out of this. Absolutely. Okay. All right. Thank you, John Muldrow from Electrosonics. Thank you, David Brown, Lowe, CAS. Thank you. Thank you very much. Right. Tim Ford. Right on, guys. Okay. It was great. We did it. Cool. <laughs>